is so beautiful. And Ricky loves it too. I've been wanting to go to Sedona, Arizona since I learned about it years ago. And we're finally here. The amazing red rocks and cliffs and buttes of Sedona do not disappoint. It's absolutely beautiful. We plan to stay here a week or two while we're waiting for the weather to warm up to the north. And we're camping on Forest Road 525 outside of Sedona. Dispersed camping, so it's for free. And we have this amazing view to our new backyard. Cottonwood's about 10 miles away and that's good for shopping and laundry and that sort of thing. And while we're here, we hope to do some of the world famous hiking that's all over this region and see some of the buttes and red cliffs and rocks and ancient dwellings that are all over this Native American land. It's stunningly beautiful. And I just want to absorb the beauty and the presence of this place. It's a magical place. I want to talk about something that's kind of been on my mind and something that comes up occasionally in the comments under my videos or when I meet people in real life, face to face. And that is the subject of fear and anxiety when it comes to living this lifestyle. A lot of people ask me, aren't you afraid to do this by yourself? Or I could never do that, I'd be too scared. It may seem like a scary idea to go out into the world by yourself, living a nomadic life like this. But the fact is, I don't know any nomad who I've met who's had a violent altercation. I don't know anyone who's had a break-in. I don't know anybody who's had a threat, which I'm very grateful for. It seems to be a very safe way of life, actually. That's not to say that bad things can't happen. It's important to be prepared and take care of yourself. Sometimes people uh, advise me what kind of weapons I should have out here on my own, and I'm not going to talk about what weapons I do have, but I, I think I'm as prepared as I need to be. Fearful thinking is something that can happen to all of us at one time or another. It may come from childhood, things that happened then. It may come from traumatic past experiences. It may just come from absorbing the culture around us when we watch the media and the news. It's full of tragic events. I'm not an expert on nomadic living or RV living. I'm not a self-defense expert. <laughs> and. I'm just someone who has encountered my own fears and I wanna tell you a little bit about that and how you might get over the fearful thoughts yourself. The fact is we all carry our own minds with us wherever we go. So if you're someone who has a tendency to have habitual fear of the outside world, that's something that you need to contend with as you go about this lifestyle by yourself. Personally, I have more anxiety and fears come up about breaking down on the road in the middle of the freeway or breaking my leg and being helpless, that kind of thing. What if I get a tire blowout in the middle of the freeway on the trailer? Or what if the truck has some mechanical issue and I don't know how to fix it? All these thoughts keep going through my head and one leads to the other. But no matter what kind of fear comes up in your life, it's usually not a very helpful experience to be anxious about life and it can rob you of the happiness and importance of each moment. The experiences that you get out on the road are invaluable and precious and it's a shame when they're ruined by anxiety. Usually it's the kind of fear that comes up about things that might happen. Of course, I'm not talking about being prepared for emergency situations. I try to be prepared with my truck and my trailer to minimize the risk of maintenance issues, breaking down on the road. I try to be careful with my body. I take normal precautions when out and about in the world by myself. And Ricky is a great comfort to me when it comes to feeling secure in the trailer. And I don't like to let fear rule my life. Sometimes I have an anxious moment here or there, but transcending fear is a really important part of this journey for me. The fact is right here and right now, everything is fine. Everything is perfect. I'm well, Ricky's well, there's no problem. I look around and the sun is shining and I'm having wonderful new experiences and I feel like I'm really lucky to be living this lifestyle. 
So when anxiety does come up, I recognize it as a thought pattern that comes to me whether I like it or not. And if I can stand back a little bit, give it a little space and just witness it, I'm able to understand that right here and right now, everything's fine. And the fearful thoughts and anxious thoughts that come to me, they're just thoughts. We all have thoughts, but you don't have to believe every thought that goes through your mind. If you can take a little space, step back and just witness the thoughts as they go by, you don't have to become identified with them and become totally involved with them. You can be without being your thoughts. I practice meditation now on a daily basis and it helps me to realize that my physical body being here in this beautiful world is separate from my thoughts. Beingness is separate from the thinking mind. And if you can take refuge in your beingness in the here and now, those thoughts have much less power. And you can understand that while being prepared is important, anxious thoughts, fearful thoughts don't do anyone any good. When that kind of fearful thinking subsides and quiets down, you don't lose consciousness and you don't lose your sense of awareness about what's around you. In fact, it's heightened and you're able to rest in the knowledge that everything is fine right now. And if something comes up in the future, it'll be right now at that point as well. And you'll be able to handle whatever comes up. But to be free of this compulsive, fearful thinking is really important. And I believe it's the next step in our evolution as people to get beyond our dysfunction and our constant reactivity. Reframing your thinking can sometimes help, um, but I feel like repressing your thoughts doesn't help at all. In fact, if you try to repress your thoughts, they can even get more energy and it can kind of backfire. So just be a witness to the thoughts that are going on in your head without being carried away by them. There are many teachers of meditation out there, so I won't go into different techniques, but I do highly recommend meditation on a daily basis to help quiet the mind and to develop an appreciation for the here and now. If that's something that interests you, I really recommend that you look into meditation and just incorporate it into your everyday life. If you're taking a walk, if you're playing with your dog, if you're cooking, you can do it in a meditative state of mind that will allow you to greatly increase your quality of life. Once you're able to make the shift and understand that your thoughts aren't necessarily reality, in fact, they're often a misinterpretation of reality, and the here and now is quite often a beautiful thing, it brings such a peacefulness, such an appreciation of the beauty of this world and, and of this lifestyle. So I make it a practice every day to spend as much time as I can right here and now. After a while, after a bit of practice in this way, it's much more easy to look around the world and perceive the beauty and the perfection of what is real right now. Transcending fear for me means understanding my ability to be in the moment without being absorbed in my fearful thoughts. And that's a beautiful thing.